everything inside me. Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are healthy. Anyway, this video is a continuation of the previous video. For those of you who haven't watched it, no problem, you can watch it later. This time, we will discuss about George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, and the Great Reset. Before we get started, let's take a little flashback of what we discussed yesterday. A contemporary and student of Huxley, was George Orwell, real name Eric Blair, who wrote another dystopian classic, entitled, 1984, published in 1949. The two books, 1984 and Brave New World, share the commonality, that they both depict a future devoid of the very things that we associate with having a healthy, free, creative, purposeful and enjoyable life. In 1984, the context is, a society where an all-knowing, all-seeing Big Brother rules with an iron fist. Citizens are under constant watch. Privacy is non-existent, and language is twisted to justify and glorify oppression. Some of the spectacles of 2020 could have easily been ripped straight out of the pages of 1984, as riots were described by cheery news anchors as mostly peaceful protests, even as city blocks were engulfed in flames behind them, and people were bleeding to death in the streets. For those familiar with the book, such scenes were difficult to watch without being reminded of 1984's doublethink. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. There are differences between the two works however. While Orwell foresees people being forcefully enslaved by an external agency, and kept in that state by the same, Huxley's vision is, one in which people have been so thoroughly conditioned, that they come to love their servitude. At that point, no external authoritarian ruler is actually required. If you think about it, I'm sure you will agree, that this is clearly the most efficient strategy to take control of the population. Moore's law and the exponential improvement in computer processing capacity has exponentially accelerated the global elite's ability to precisely identify how to implement peaceful control that will have the majority virtually begging for tyranny. In Huxley's Brave New World, people have fallen in love with the very technologies that prevent them from thinking and acting of their free will, so the enslaved maintain their own control structure. As noted by Neil Postman in his book, entitled, Amusing Ourselves to Death, Public Discourse in the Age of Show Business, in which he compares and contrasts the futures presented by Huxley and Orwell. What Orwell feared, were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared, was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much, that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared, that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared, the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal bumblepipi. As Huxley remarked in Brave New World Revisited, the civil libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny, fail to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions. In 1984, Huxley added, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, they are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared, that what we hate, will ruin us. Huxley feared, that what we love, will ruin us. One can argue about who predicted the future best, Orwell, or Huxley, but in the final analysis, I think we're looking at a mixture of both, although it seems obvious to me that Huxley was more prescient, and he was actually Orwell's mentor. 
Huxley's concerns are far more serious, as the programming is essentially silent, and it is patently evident that the technocrats have been highly successful in implementing this strategy in the past year. That said, we're facing both the threat of externally imposed authoritarianism and control predicted by Orwell, and the subversive subliminal programming through mindless entertainment and the lure of convenience proposed by Huxley. Undoubtedly, the combination is a powerful one, and likely far more effective than either control strategy by itself. I've already touched on how Orwell's work is playing out in the real world through the doublethink mental gymnastics we get from the controlled tightly centralized mainstream media these days. For an example of how Huxley's ideas have influenced the technocracy's planning, look no further than the globalists' call to build back better, and the World Economic Forum's 2030 agenda, which includes the strangely ominous dictum that you will own nothing and be happy. The unstated implication is that the world's resources will be owned and controlled by the technocratic elite, and you'll have to pay for the temporary use of absolutely everything. Nothing will actually belong to you. All items and resources are to be used by the collective, while actual ownership is restricted to an upper stratum of social class. Just how will this imposed serfdom make you happy? Again, the unstated implication is that lack of ownership is a marvelous convenience. Rent a pot, and then return it. You don't need storage space. Imagine the freedom. They even promise the convenience of automatic drone delivery straight to your door. Artificial intelligence, which is siphoning your data about every aspect of your existence through nearly every piece of technology and appliance you own, will run your life, predicting your every mood and desire, catering to your every whim. Ah, the luxury of not having to make any decisions. Aldous Huxley said, life of man is ultimately impossible without a considerable measure of individual freedom. This is the mince that they're trying to program into you, and for most, it appears to be working. For others who can see the propaganda for what it is, these promises look and feel like proverbial mouse traps. Once you bite the cheese, you'll be stuck, robbed of your freedom for vermore. And, as Huxley told Wallace, individual freedom is really a prerequisite for a genuinely productive society. Life of man is ultimately impossible without a considerable measure of individual freedom. Initiative and creativity, all these things that we value, and I think value properly, are impossible without a large measure of freedom. When Wallace challenges Huxley on this by pointing out that the Soviet Union was successfully developing both militarily and artistically, despite being a tightly controlled regime, Huxley counters by saying that those doing that creative work, especially scientists, were also granted far greater personal freedom and prosperity than everyone else. As long as they kept their noses out of politics, they were brought into the upper echelon and given a great deal of freedom, and without this freedom, they would not have been able to be as creative and inventive, Huxley says. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video.